Welcome to the Ignatius Press webinar entitled Parents as the First Teachers of the Faith. Let's begin with the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Julie Johnson, and I will be your host for this webinar, Parents as the First Teachers of the Faith. So I'd like to begin with an understanding of what we're going to be go going over here. First of all, we're going to talk about our goal as parents. Secondly, how to get there. Then we'll talk about the faith being a living faith, and then focus on parents as the primary teachers of the faith. Then we'll talk a bit about the battle that we face, that, that the battle out there in the culture that we're uh, battling with every day. We'll take it from there directly into the new evangelization, and then talk about the Faith and Life Family Guide, a tool to equip you to become the first teachers of the faith. Then we'll end the session with Q&A. <clears throat> okay, the first thing I'd like to talk about is what is our goal? Our goal as parents is getting our children's souls to heaven. I think we can all um, say that that is true. While we have many, many goals within their lifetime, our ultimate goal is to get them to heaven. So we ask ourselves the question, how do we get them there? We all know that uh, the first thing we do to help our children get to heaven is to have them baptized. And uh, what I'd like to point out here is, as you see here in the picture, the waters flowing over uh, the child's head are the same waters that we, the same cleansing, healing waters that we read about in scripture. The, the waters with uh, Noah and the flood, Moses and the parting of the Red Sea, and the River Jordan as many were baptized there by John the Baptist. The past literally becomes present in baptism. This is part of what our, our faith is all about, is going back to uh, times in the Old Testament and drawing a connection between those miraculous happenings and the sacraments that we receive today. In this sacrament of baptism, as we know, we receive the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. These theological virtues are literally infused into the soul. So you see the water pouring over this baby is not just some sort of ritual, and some sort of nice thing to do but rather something here is really taking effect. While the past becomes present, this child is receiving the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. But as parents, what we must do is to nurture those virtues. While we receive them, if they're not nurtured, they can, uh, they, they, of course they never go away, but they can become less effective in our lives. We, we know many baptized uh, Christians who don't uh, necessarily uh, have these virtues in the fullest extent that they should be uh, lived out. So as parents, we must nurture these virtues. So we, we ask ourselves, well, what are these virtues? And let's just go through just a, a touch on each of the virtues and what it means to uh, nurture those virtues. Well, first of all, the faith, uh, the virtue of faith is something we receive so that we can believe in all the things of God. The question is, do we really believe? Do we really believe? And by that, what I mean is not just in our heads, but do we live it out as though our life depended on the fact that Jesus Christ is alive today? alive in our lives, should be alive in every decision that we make, alive in our actions. Do we believe it? Do we live it out? And by doing that, we literally nurture these virtues 
in our children, in our in ourselves and in our children. With hope. Here we see Jesus knocking on the door of our hearts. There's no doorknob there. He can't open the door. But we're on the other side. Do we really open that door in hope and in anticipation of of uh, realizing relationship with Jesus Christ? Do we, sorry, do we desire the kingdom of heaven and our eternal life as our happiness? Placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strengths, as it's so easy to do, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. Is this the kind of hope we have and that we pass on to our children? Every day, we should teach our children to depend on Jesus Christ. Love. Do we love when it's just convenient, when it's easy, when we love those who love us? Or we do, do we love when it's difficult? Do we love as God loves? Unconditional love. Total self-giving love. That's what love is really all about. Do we nurture these virtues in ourselves and in doing so, pass them on to our children? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Next. Uh, in, in order to nurture these theological virtues, we've already answered how do we nurture the virtues. We nurture them by living them out ourselves and then passing them on to our children. But next, we also have to ask ourselves, is Jesus Christ the center of our lives? Because he, if he is, we will live out those virtues. We will nurture them. So in bringing Jesus Christ closer to our own hearts, our own lives. We will also bring him to our children and nurture those virtues in our children, as we've already uh, briefly mentioned. Next, how do we pass on the faith otherwise to our children? It's not just the theological virtues. While that's probably one of the most important things we can do is to nurture those virtues, there's other parts of the faith that, that our children must understand. So what can we do? Well, that faith must be passed from person to person. It's not something that can merely be done in a textbook. A textbook is a mere tool. We have to actually live out the faith, understand the faith, believe it, have that deep understanding of hope for eternal life and a, an understanding of true self-giving love. And in doing so, pass that on to our children. You see, the gift of faith is the greatest gift we can give to our children. When was the last time we, we prayed with our children? Hopefully just yesterday or this morning or read scripture to them. When was the last time we read scripture to them? When was the last time we attended mass with them? hopefully on Sunday. This is the greatest gift we can give to our children. You see, God has entrusted us to lead our children to Jesus Christ. Our children are a gift to us, entrusted to us to lead them back to the Father so that we must take their hands and show them what their eternal goal in life is and to lead them there straight to Jesus Christ, who will then lead us to the Father. So where do parents begin? What do we need to know? What do we need to pass on? How do we do this? I mean, we, we're, there's so many things that must be running through our minds now as we reflect on our ultimate goal as parents. First, we must realize that our faith is a living faith. It's something alive. It's something that we can't just cognitively learn uh, in a book. We have to understand that the risen Christ is alive in our lives today and should be alive in every decision and every action that we make. And our children have to see this because only in them seeing this in us will they really believe it. Otherwise, it just becomes something they learn in a textbook or hear from uh, their teacher in religion class. 
It has to be something they see in their daily lives. The risen Christ must be alive in our actions as we teach them and show them what real self-giving love is. Or take them to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and tell them that that is Jesus in the monstrance as we kneel before uh, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament as a family. So parents are all saying, well, we do our best. Or saying, I, you know, I never learned this. This, this wasn't, wasn't how the faith was passed on to me. Or, oh, I'm so busy. I work full time. I've got this and I've got that. We all say that. We all have these same things. But what's at the top of our priority list? We might even say, you've got to be kidding. This is way beyond my scope. I can't do all this. No matter what you're saying, no matter what you're thinking, we have to direct ourselves to say, yes, I really do want to leave my children to heaven. I, I admit that is my job as a parent. And I want to leave my child to heaven. How can I do this? Help me. Help me lead my child to heaven. Well, first we have to realize that there is a battle out there. This is the real world that we live in. The culture is inundated with all kinds of things that take us everywhere except to Jesus Christ. Here we see St. Michael the Arch Archangel battling the battle for us. But we have a battle. It is out there. If we don't think there's a battle against evil, then he's already won the battle. There is a real live battle of the spiritual world going on out there. It's not to scare you or, or, or anything else. It's real. And we can see it in the culture. The culture must be ordered to God. We live in a culture that's ordered to itself, not to God. I mean, the culture is meant to be ordered to God because Jesus Christ himself entered into time and entered into our culture in order to draw us to him. So what are we, what are we facing in this culture that's ordered to itself? Secularism. A material world that literally seduces us and our children away from God. <laughs> I mean, that's what secularism is. It's a material world that just distracts us beyond belief to the point where I hear people that go to, go to the mall instead of going to mass. I mean, we have to get our priorities or go to a football game instead of going to mass. We have to get our priorities straight. This is real stuff. This is the real world, more real than that which surrounds us. Rationalism. Well, I'm Catholic, but I just don't buy into all of that stuff. Well, if we are Catholic, our call is to find out what that stuff is all about. Find out why the church teaches what she teaches. Because it isn't arbitrary. They're all the teachers, teachings of Jesus Christ. We have to understand them. So, we, we can't rationalize our way into in or out of our faith. We have to live it out. It's a real living faith. It, it doesn't come compartmentalized. It's not a cafeteria-style faith. It is the truth of Jesus Christ that we took on when, when we uh, were confirmed and we take on for our children when we baptize them. A true Catholic identity is one in which we say we are oriented, in which we, I'm sorry, in, is one in which we are oriented to the person of Jesus Christ in our daily lives. Why? Because he alone can lead us to the Father. We are committed to knowing and understanding the truth of Jesus Christ and passing that on to our, our children. Therefore, we must follow the words of Pope Francis, who said in the homily, the Lord always wants us to move forward, 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 he says, not to take refuge in a quiet life or in cozy structures. You know, the lifestyle that we're, whatever it is that we're living in, whether we're not living out the faith to the fullest or whether we think we are, whatever our, our situation is, we have to move beyond where we are, move forward, because that's the call of Jesus Christ, to move towards him. So where do we begin in all of this? in this endeavor. First, 
by realizing that as parents, we are the primary teachers of the faith. In the words of Pope John Paul II, we hear, by virtue of their ministry of educating, parents are, through the witness of their lives, the first heralds of the gospel for their children. So we have to live it out. We have to be in full participation of the sacramental life of the church. And whatever it is that may or may not be in our ways, we, we overcome those hurdles. We live out the faith. In every action of our lives, we live out the gospel message. This is what we're called to do as parents. Secondly, the words of Pope John Paul II again, he says, furthermore, by praying with their children, by reading the word of God with them, by introducing them deeply through Christian initiation into the body of Christ, both the Eucharistic and the ecclesial body, they become fully parents. So we ask ourselves the question, how do I be a better parent? By doing just that, praying with our children, reading the word of God with them, introducing them to to the body of Christ, both the Eucharistic and the ecclesial body. That's how we become fully parents. G.K. Chesterton says, if seeds in the black earth can turn into such beautiful roses. What might not the heart of man become in its long journey towards the stars? Yet our children's hearts must be led by their parents so that they can realize their fullest potential, so that they can realize their eternal destiny. It's not just something to think about when one day when we're on our deathbed is something we should think about every day of our lives, Orient, orienting ourselves to the person of Jesus Christ, who alone can lead us to the Father. Because the person of Jesus Christ must become a reality in our lives. The risen Christ has to be alive in every thought, in every moment of my life. I must, as a parent, not only as a parent, but as a person, be in, in touch with him so that I too can pass on the fact that he is alive to my children. This is the new ardor. This, this very understanding is something that has to resonate in our hearts and come alive for us in a very special way so that our children can understand this. But it's not just the risen Christ for us right now, we have to also have an understanding of who he is from the beginning of time. In the story of Adam and Eve, what happened back then? What connection does the story of Adam and Eve have to do with the Eucharist that we receive? And what are the connecting dots along the, along the way? These are the things that we learn in, in, our, in our faith journey, but particularly in the Faith and Life series, all the connections are made along the way, along the way because the narrative of salvation history literally unfolds before our very eyes. The understanding of the love story that God has for his people, for us, for our children. Why? For one purpose only. So that we can share an eternal beatitude. So that we can attain eternal life. This is our goal in life. Everything we do must be oriented towards it. And we must orient our children to this understanding. So in all of this, okay, this is, this is fine to say this is a beautiful goal and all of that, but how is it actually accomplished for me and you as Catholics? The mystery of God's saving plan is literally accomplished through the liturgy and the sacraments. This is why it's important not to miss Mass on Sundays. Because God's gift to us is given to us in the Eucharist, in the liturgy, and in all the sacraments. These are critical for us as Christians. This is the very thing Jesus came here for. Yes, to die on the cross, but through the life received, as you can see in this work of art, the vines growing out of the cross remind us of the life received 
through the passion of Christ, given to us in the sacramental life of the church. It's so important that we understand this so that we can pass it on to our children. Therefore, we literally participate in God's saving plan. It's not just for Noah and Moses and Abraham, the people of the Old Testament. It's not just about them, but we participate in that plan through the liturgy and the sacraments. As I said earlier, the same cleansing and healing and miraculous waters that parted the Red Sea we receive in, in the sacraments. These are celebrated throughout the liturgical year. This is why it's so important that we fully participate in every aspect of the liturgical year, not just sort of showing up at Mass when we, when we feel like it. This is such a gift we cannot turn our backs on. In all of this, I'd like to point out about the new evangelization. The new evangelization is, is here to wake us all up. Because many of us have been or are asleep in our, in our faith journey and in our own endeavors to lead our children to Jesus Christ. We're all in a different place or have been in different places and hopefully are turned in the right direction. But the new evangelization, which is this, uh, this movement to wake us all up, has to begin with the domestic church. This is what Pope Benedict told us. It has to begin with the family. Why? Because the family is the nucleus of society. And in the nucleus, that's where things have to happen. They can't just happen on the parish level, and that's good, or on the archdiocesan level, or even on the level of the Vatican. They have to actually take place in the family. So, Ignatius Press offers to you a way for this to happen, a step-by-step -step guide for families to use at home, a faith-sharing opportunity for parents to use at home. Two volumes, volume one through four, which is volume A, and volume B, grades five through eight. These volumes are a step-by-step -step opportunity for you to use it at home with your children, whether or not the parish is going to be offering this or whether or not you Go to the website and purchase the book on your own. Here's how it works. This uh, double-page spread here is for grade one, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, chapter three. It's very easy. 15, 20 minutes of you to sit down with your child once a week to go over what they've learned in class and to live it out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, the lesson focus. It just gives us as parents a couple sentences. You'll probably learn something from the focus, but it tells you what the children learned in class that week. Secondly, how do you begin? You begin with a prayer. Then you share something with your child. This particular chapter says, share with your child a story about when he was a baby. That would be appropriate for grade one, leading into whatever this chapter is about. Then read a, a, a scripture verse. How, how beautiful for a child to see this parent reading to him the scripture. Then give them a small one sentence summary, reminder of what the chapter was about. The sentence, maybe two. Then review with them, seven questions, seven answers. So you don't even have to know the answers. Then if you want more information, this is wonderful, right here in the little blue box. Where do you find more information? Either in the textbook, sacred scripture, or the catechism of the Catholic Church. You should have all three in every home. You must, if you don't already, we need to have a copy of scripture and the catechism at home. Next, which I believe is probably the most important thing on this page is life application. How does this content of faith work in my life? How do we apply this in my life, in my life, in the lives of my children? Three simple questions just to open up discussion, to talk about your faith with your children. It might even have something to do with, with whatever is going on in your life. Then conclude with a prayer. And again, most importantly, follow it up. Live out your faith. These follow-up suggestions, and you, you can just choose one if you want, but these follow-up suggestions range from anything from a simple prayer, memorizing a Catholic prayer, to taking your children uh, to Mass early and lighting a votive candle, 
and kneeling down as a family and saying a prayer, either before or after Mass. Maybe it's taking your family to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. If you don't have it in your parish, find a parish that does. Kneel before the Blessed Sacrament as a family and pray. Your life, your family life, I promise you, will change. Maybe it's taking the family to a shelter. Whatever it is, live out the faith to the fullest. It's all right here before your very eyes. Just do it. This is a gift for you to equip you to become the primary educator, the primary um, teacher of the faith for your children, to partner with your, your, your child's parish or school. It's not enough just to drop them off at PSR. It's not enough just to, to enroll them in a Catholic school. It's just not enough. We must live it out in the family. And hopefully that's what many of us are doing. And if it's not, all the tools are right here for you. Another very engaging and interactive resource to use in the family is our new Jesse box, where the Bible stories literally come alive. This is such a great interactive tool uh, to use in the family. It's basically a diorama that tells a story. It tells the story of salvation history. The, the dioramas are made of, right now, just seven different stories, and you can learn from these. This particular one tells about the origins of the Eucharist. The first session is the first Passover in Egypt, when Moses led uh, his people uh, through the Red Sea and into uh, out of Egypt. So here we see the blood of the lamb placed over the door the first night that they sacrificed the lamb and had the, the, the uh, celebration of the first Passover feast. The second session is about the Last Supper, when Jesus was actually celebrating the Passover feast the night before he died, when he instituted the Eucharist and instituted the priesthood. The third session is about the Mass. So we see all the connections where the Mass can literally have, make more sense to us, and we make the connection between Moses delivering the people from the bondage of slavery and Jesus delivering us from the bondage of our own sinfulness in the mass. It, 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 it's beautiful because we understand it not only for ourselves but for our children. And then we go to mass not because we feel that we're obligated but because we want to be there. Because we realize the fruits of the sacramental life of the church this wonderful gift given to us by Jesus Christ himself. This is what he came here for. So in doing all of this, children come to realize the depth and the beauty of the Catholic faith, particularly through the Faith and Life series, particularly through the uh, Family Guide, which is a component of the Faith and Life series. What else happens? The Catholic identity of our families is truly sharpened. We know, then, what it means to be Catholic and to live out our faith. This should be our goal. The fullness of the Catholic faith comes alive, and we learn about our faith from the beginning, including not only what we can see, can see but the unseen, about the angels and saints that are literally present at the Holy Mass always pointing to the person of Jesus Christ. Families now, through these tools, come to know and love Jesus Christ and to be in communion with him, because that's our ultimate goal, is to be one with God in heaven. And we can have a foretaste of heaven here on earth at the Mass. These are the very things we, we come to realize by using these tools. So you see, as parents, our job may seem difficult, but the tools are here for us. And then students and parents come to understand the Eucharist as the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Here in our very presence at Mass or at the uh, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And in all of this, families, your family, I promise you, will become more active in the sacramental life of the church. The very gift promised and given to us 
through the church and in the sacraments by Jesus Christ. So what are our expectations as parents? To pray, uh, just pray alone individually, to do spiritual reading, find a book that can uh, lead you closer and deeper into your own spiritual life. Participate in adult faith formation at your parish. If there isn't any, pick up your child's faith and life book, textbook. I promise you, you will learn from it. I have second grade teachers that tell me all the time they're embarrassed to admit how much they learn in second grade textbook. As a family, pray together daily, morning, noon, and, and evening. I know you, you're, you're not with your kids all the time at noon, but take on some of the Catholic devotions. Maybe new, learn a new one every month. Take your family to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Your lives will change. Jesus is there for you. This is a gift to help us in our own journeys and in the journeys of our children. Participate fully in the sacramental life of the church. Attend Mass every Sunday. Go back to confession if you haven't been in a while. It's okay. Just go there. Share your faith with your children. Give them life application uh, examples in your own life and in the family guide. Live out the faith. Use the family guide. It's probably one of the best tools you could have right now before you're very in your very hands to, to uh, help your children along in their faith journey. It's all there. It's all right there for you. I wanted to read to you uh, a quote out of the book on Christian culture. It says, if Christian culture, and this was written a long, long ago, is to be renewed, habits are to be more vital than revivals. That's our daily habits. Rituals are to be more edifying. And spiritual highs. The creed is to be more penetrating than theological insight. And the celebration of saint days is to be more uplifting than the observance of Mother's Day. There is great wisdom in the malign phrase, ex opero operato. The effect is in the doing. For intention is like a reed blowing in the wind. It is the doing that counts. Live out your faith. And if we do something for God, God does something for us. You see, we need to orient ourselves and our children to a Catholic worldview, to the one true, the good, and the beautiful, God himself. Thank you for attending. I'd like to end by saying... Um, a couple of things. Number one, if you have any questions, feel free to call my direct line, 1-800-779-5534, or feel free to email me. My email address is julie, J-U-L-I-E, at ignatius.com. Many resources are available for you as parents and as educators. Please go to faithandlifeseries.com, just like it sounds, faithandlifeseries.com, or you may also go to our partner uh, company called My Catholic Faith Delivered. The Faith and Life series is available in a full web-based interactive format online. Uh, this is used in schools, in parishes. It's used for faith formation. It's also used in homeschooling situations. That's My Catholic Faith Delivered. Dot com. Thank you so much, and may God bless your family.